What's up y'all, Ben Vista the Heartland Maker here. Today we're out at the golf course as you can see. And the reason we're out here is because I made myself a five wood out of wood. We got a beach head, a hickory handle, and a leather wrap. And we're gonna see what this baby can do. I'm not good enough for a golf club to make a difference anyway, so it should be a fun time. My first step in making the golf club was to make the shaft. I made the shaft out of hickory. Hickory is the strongest domestic hardwood that we have here in North America. And according to golfcollege.edu, back in 1750, hickory became the choice for club makers to use for the wooden shafts. Previously, they were using things like ash and hazel, but once they were able to get a reliable shipping between North America and Western Europe, it switched over to almost all hickory. But that's enough of a history lesson for now. Let's go over to Live Ben who has a message for us. Thanks voiceover Ben. Here we're just testing to see how this length feels in the hands. I think it's gonna be too long, too short. If anything, it's a little bit long, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a through head. So this is gonna go all the way through. So the head's gonna take up about this much, that much space. So when you take that into account, I think this should end up being about the right length for handle. Once I was happy and comfortable with the length of my shaft, it was time to make it round. Now my lathe is not big enough to support the length of this shaft, so I had to use a spoke shave to make it round, and a spoke shave is essentially just a mini plane. You run it along the corner of your piece, and as you keep doing that over time, it gets more and more round, and you can finish sand it to make it perfectly round if you need to. But for now, let's just sit back and enjoy the soothing and serene-like nature of using a spoke shave. And now we're gonna go into time-lapse mode, watch the wood ribbons pile up, and watch my dog observe every motion. Here you can see the job the spoke shave is doing and getting it down to round. It's not quite perfect at this point, but it's really close. Yeah, she feels good. I think this is how we want her. We might taper it a little bit at the ends, but other than that, this is pretty darn close to what I want. I have to sand it, make it perfectly smooth, but otherwise, this is what we're looking for. Whew! Takes a lot out of you. And now to a more PG rated way of standing, because there's just no G rated way to actually stand a shaft. Okay, that's enough of that. I think LiveBen has another message for us. Thanks voiceover Ben. All right, so what we got here is this is a piece of eight quarter beach. As you can see, plenty of thickness there for the club face. And then what I'm planning on doing is using this part with the circular grain for the club head. I think that's gonna make a really cool look. I think we're gonna have a lot of cool grain in there. So we're gonna cut this off with the bandsaw, either this side or this side will be the face of the club and we're just gonna shape it and see how it turns out. Back to you. Thanks, Live Ben. And now that we're back at the bandsaw, it's time for another history lesson. Beech was the original wood used for wooden golf club heads, but once again, once Western Europeans discovered North America, they switched over to Pear Simon for their golf club heads. Now, I was gonna use that, but once I saw the price of Pear Simon, I said, nope, Beech is good enough for me. What you just saw there was me cutting a 21 degree angle um, for my club face. When I looked it up, most five woods were about 20 degrees. I wanted something with a little bit more loft, so I went with 21. And then now I'm making a mark for the shaft for my handle to go into that I'm gonna drill out. 
Once the angle of the club face was cut and the hole for the shaft was drilled, I could then turn to roughing out the rest of the club head. Once I was happy with the profile of the club head, I could then turn to the actual shaping and contouring of the club head. To do this, I used a number of different things. I used files, I used rasps, as you see here. I used sandpaper, and this took a long time and a long process, but it was a beautiful day outside and it was enjoyable, so I just sat out on my porch before the planters were built, linked to that video in the description, and I had a wonderful day sanding and shaping a club head. What I'm doing here is mixing some two-part epoxy to bond the head of the club to the shaft that I made. Um, I went two-part epoxy because it's incredibly strong and it doesn't come apart easily at all. I used five minute epoxy, which cures in five minutes. So once that five minutes was up, I could break out the saw, cut off the um, excess shaft, and then I could sand it smooth. And if I learn anything from the History Channel TV show Forged in Fire, it's that you need a mechanical connection between the handle and the business end of whatever you're making. So I broke out a drill and I drilled some holes for some dowels that are connect the club head mechanically to the shaft to make sure the club head never flies off. And at this point, I just couldn't resist swinging it. Once I was happy with how it felt, I could tape off the top portion of the handle where I'm gonna wrap it with leather and then finish the rest of the club and club head. Now, I did this backwards of how I should have. I definitely finished myself into a corner. I should have started the club head and finished closer to the handle, but I started the handle and finished the club head, which is wrong. And here you see me struggling to get finished toward the end of the club. I should mention I am using oil-based polyurethane for the finish, which is at least water resistant. So if there's morning dew on the golf course or anything, we should be good to go from that perspective. 
Next, it was time to cut a three quarter inch wide strip of leather for the leather wrap for my handle. I'm using chrome tanned leather here, which is different than the veg tanned leather I use for my dog's bed. Link in the description there. Chrome tan leather is gonna have some more water resistant properties and it's more pliable than veg tan leather. So that's really the main reason why I went with that. And then once I got everything ready and prepped, it was time to apply some contact cement, which you see here to both the wood handle and the leather wrap. And then with contact cement, once the two things touch, they're bonded for life. So I'm hoping this leather wrap should last a long, long time. And that'll just about do it for the wooden golf club project. Now, I couldn't stop there. I also made myself a leather golf head cover, a wooden tee, and a wooden ball. But we'll see that in another project video in about two weeks time. But for now, here's a little teaser of me hitting a golf ball with a wooden club. If you enjoyed this week's video, I'd appreciate it if you threw a like on it. And if you want to see the golf club accessories video when that comes out, subscribing is the best way to see it. It's also the best way to see any other content like this, and I'd greatly appreciate it.